Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the vineyard. It's nice and cool inside. Take a break from being outside in the heat. We've come to worship, and uh, we want you to worship along with us. Father, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you are. Come now and receive our praise. Meet us in this place this morning. You're worthy. We thank you. Amen. I will testify of the Lord's great love. I will see, I will dance. I will lift my hands, I will praise his name for eternity. There is no more condemnation, this will be my declaration. Great is the Lord's great love for me. I will testify of amazing grace i was lost i was blind out of sorts out of place when he called my name and he set me free there is no more dissolution i can say without confusion great is the lord's great love for me I will testify of the empty grave. He is here, he's alive, and he heals and saves. He's the truth and life. He's the narrow way. And if we put our faith in Jesus into heaven, you receive us. Great is the Lord's great love for me. I will testify of the Lord's great love. I will sing, I will dance, I will lift my hands, I will praise His name for eternity. There is no more condemnation, this will be my declaration. Great is the Lord's great love for me. And there is no more condemnation, this will be my declaration. Great is the Lord's great love for me. There is no more condemnation, this will be my declaration. Great is the Lord's great love for me. Sometimes life is like a fast train Barreling through a hurricane Oh yeah, but it's all right Push your love is like a spring rain That washes and sustains And leads me into that good life Sometimes I can be like I don't want to be Just like those boys out on the Sea of Galilee When the sky grows dark And the winds blow strong When 
those waves rise and fall is when I start to carry on. I want my boat bailed out. Instead, you call the storm. Jesus, your love is more than I could ask for, even more than I could ask.
to what shall I liken thee, my fairest Lord, O oh, glorious King, not in word or rhyme or melody could I express your glory and the stars will fade away but your throne will last forever as it was it is today oh lovely one my heart's desire this offering of praise is all I have to bring to you my dearest friend oh lovely one oh lovely one
offering of praise is all I have to bring to you, my dearest friend, oh lovely one, oh lovely one, you're my dearest friend. giving us a glimpse of your glory. That we might see that you are a lovely one and you are worthy of praise. Regardless of what we hear regardless of what we feel, regardless of what we see, you love us and you're in control. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come near and bring comfort. Remove fear. Free us from our misgivings about you and the world around us, God, that we could take our eyes off of what we see and place our focus on you. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Receive our praise this morning. Hear our cries for deliverance. For justice and for mercy. Help us. 
us to put our faith and trust and our hope in you. spring flower in the rain. No fallen angel is worthy to be worshipped, nor anything created. You love these guys? Yeah. Give me a hand. Thank you, guys. 
Good morning. It's great to have you here with us. And um, we have some visitors, I know. So we're happy to have you here. And we have um, a Connect card that sits in front of you in that little slot in the chair in front of you. And if you want to fill that out with your information, we'll, we'll be giving you a... Uh, am I buzzing? We'll be giving you a, uh, a gift. Is that better? I think, am I good still? All right. I think I'm sounding good still, so I'm going to leave this here for now. As long as it's still working. Y para mi amigo venezolano, si quieres completar la tarjeta y poner en la bolsa cuando recibimos la ofrenda, podemos dar un regalo. You didn't know we're bilingual. How was I? How was I? I was <laughs> All right. You understood too? Good. Oh yeah. You know it, it's uh, surprising when I meet somebody born in Venezuela because I was born there and we have a gentleman in the back from Venezuela. I don't know what the hand sign is for Venezuela, but there's there's a <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh and if you don't have time to fill out the Connect card before, we can always uh, receive it in the box in the, in the foyer there in the back. Um, this week we've got a, uh, a youth event coming up, and we're going to be at the Westwood Cinema. And the movie is um, The Secret Life of Pets. So um, for all the youth who want to go, oh, well, <laughs> you beat my, you took my thunder here. <laughs> so for all the adults that want to go, um, <laughs> Debbie and I will be there. The movie starts at 5 o'clock. Tickets are $4. So if you want to come and join us with the youth, you know, feel free to do that. I'll even go out so far as to say we'll buy popcorn for whoever shows up. So, one bag. A small one, no. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have some fun on uh, Wednesday at the, at the theater. And then uh, the ladies have a event on also on Wednesday um, at the Must Be Heaven restaurant in Brenham at 1 o'clock, and the study's going to be on the Book of Joel. So for all you women who want to go to this event, just hang around long enough to go to the Westwood Cinema, you know, at 4.30 and be there for the movie at 5. That'd be great. And then, um, you know, last night we were at Hot Nights and Cool Tunes, and... Um, there was a, a probably two groups of, of uh, vineyard people there. Some of the three groups. Yes, there was the older crowd is in the back because, you know, we can't take any more damage to the hearing. So we're back there. And then the other groups are there. So if you're available on Saturday nights, um, come out and join us for the, the uh, hot nights and cool tunes. Uh, the ladies, they have another event coming up um, on the Set Her Free gathering. And it's going to be Thursday, July 21st at the Stegan. And we've got the address there correct, I believe. Let me hear it. Yeah, there you go. Ryan's shaking his head. So uh, for all, all the women who would like to go to that meeting, uh, please plan to be there at 7.30 at the 20 on the 21st. So now we'll uh, receive the offering. The uh, ushers. We've got one usher. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right. All right. Well, let, let's let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for, uh, for for who you are, and we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to give back to you, um, and just to be obedient to your your word and give back the first fruits of what we receive ourselves. And we just pray that uh, this offering will be used to expand your kingdom and to um, and that we'll use it wisely. In your name we pray. Amen. So on the Connect card, um, you know, there are next steps here. So if you have not looked at this card, you should do so. And uh, if there's anything that is applicable to you, um, just check it. Put your name down, and you can put it um, in the box in the back because by now you're probably missing the, the offering bag. So with that, uh, you know, um, did anybody miss us the last couple weeks? All right, those of, you, those of you who didn't miss us, shame on you, you weren't at church. <laughs> oh, there you go. Right. 
So um, we missed the fact that Villard had that surgery, and he's healed up now. So come on, Villard. <laughs> it is great to be back and uh, have a nose, I'll just tell you. Uh, they did bring out a book uh, while they were operating and said, you can pick out any nose you want. You know, that's really not a very encouraging moment. I don't know if you've been there. Uh, when you start messing with my faith, that's serious. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things I'm just kind of vain. I don't know what's happened, but I've got a lot of stuff on the screen here. It's not supposed to be there. Uh, but uh, so maybe they won't get me up there for a while, and maybe I can get rid of all this stuff. I want to take you uh, to a moment of uh, prayer, and but I want to put a, a slide on the screen for you to see. I guess we're going to, are we there? Uh, nothing's happening? Well, it's y'all's fault, not mine, I know. Uh, it's but it's a slide that's got a whole bunch of people holding hands. So why don't we do that right now? Stand and hold hands. I know it's a little hot in here, and you know why? The whole back unit went out, that one in the nursery area. So if you think you're hot, go to the nursery. <laughs> uh, but you can help that. Give us $1,000 or so this morning. It'll help us overdo that. Yeah, we're going to get it fixed next week. Just kidding on that. Thank you so much how you do bless us. And uh, let's just pray because if this ever comes up, you're going to see a lot of hands holding. And I believe our country needs to bind together, don't you? Lord, our heart is broken as we watch the news and as we see racial strife and division. We see young black men dying and we see policemen dying, we realize that we are a divided country. And there is so much hurt out there. And Lord, I, I just, with all of my heart, I do believe black lives matter. I believe white lives matter. I believe Hispanic lives matter. Lord, I believe people are important to you. And you've called us to the job of reconciliation. Please, Lord, help the church not to be part of the division. Help us not to be saying things or doing things or uh, Facebooking things that would cause a division in our country. Help us to speak peace and love. Help us to not speak hurt and anger and pride and fear. But Lord, come and give us that hope again that you can reconcile our country, our world. Lord, we're in days when the kingdom of God is so needed. Your love is so needed. Your patience is so needed. Your mercy is so needed. Hold us together right now, Lord, and give us a love for one another. And we'll give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Thank you for just joining with me there uh, for a moment of, of prayer. Uh, we're starting a new series. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of excited about this one, Joel and I have been working on it some uh, together, and I, I like this. Hope is alive. See, we Christians, we have the same things happen to us, don't we, that happens to everybody else. You know, we lose our jobs. Somebody gets mad and screams at you. Or when you, you know, you, you miss somehow and go through a light and, and they give you a, a hand signal. You know, I mean, we've all been there, haven't we? We've had bad days, good days. My wife had a bad day just the other morning. She blew it, you know. She got out and screamed at him. No, she didn't do that. You don't tell them the whole story? Nothing but the truth. Okay, let's go on. She didn't launch, okay. <laughs> that ought to tell you right there, yeah. Your pastor's wife is like her husband. We're both very human. Yeah, yeah, very human. But, you know, that's why we have this hope in us, isn't it? Because we look at things different than the world. We should look at things different. When things are going bad, we can say, maybe God's going to use that for a greater good. Isn't that right? 
So we look at bad things and we get, wow, God could use this. God could turn this into something good. But be careful, though. It's very tempting to go with the way of the flesh, isn't it? I mean, I love going with the flesh. I love paying back. They deserve it. And that's why Jesus said, love who? Your enemies. Yeah, yeah he said, love them. Oh, that is not a fun thing. That is not a fun thing. But that's an order. That's not a, a pick and choose, you know. So hope is alive in this new series. And I'm actually doing the first of this series. And uh, matter of fact, you'll want to. Matter of fact, I had some notes to hand out. What in the heck did I do with them? Uh, where, where are they at? Does anybody want those notes so you can have them? The, the first ne- question is, oh, they're incredible notes because I made them all up. Uh, the, you won't even be able to find me in the notes with, uh, with my sermon. But the first question on there is, when you see the word elect, what comes to your mind? The word elect. The first thing I think about is, okay, God's already made all the decisions. doesn't matter anything what I do elect and so then maybe you look at it and you think wow maybe i'm special maybe i'm special so uh those are some questions i call them questions because i believe you should question everything even my sermon now i know i'm never wrong but every once in a while question my sermons you should go to the word and you should read first peter and you should study first peter and not not leave it up to me to tell you what it says but i'm going to do my best to convince you because First Peter is one of the most incredible uh, books. I, I, I'm just astounded that a man named Peter could write a book. Aren't you? I mean, this guy couldn't keep his foot out of his mouth. And yet here he is <laughs> writing a book. Now, we know that he is definitely the leader of the church of that day. Definitely. But he was, <laughs> he, he was, not, he was not what Paul was. He was not the theologian of that day. And yet, the theology in this book will astound you. Because you see, he had met Jesus. And he had learned what truth is. And I'll tell you, that makes all the difference. You can read everything in the world, every commentary in the world, but until you meet Jesus, you will never understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's his power in you that makes all the difference. So, uh... I was going to tell you what next Sunday is before. It's, we'll be going each week. Next week is 3 through 9, and uh, I was supposed to have that on there. 3 through 9, and uh, it's going to be intentional living, intentional living. And, and Peter is an intentional person. He is making decisions intentionally. Now, I believe with all my heart, as a Christian, you have to make decisions. You have to make them. And it's not always easy to make the right decision. The challenge of this, this sermon, and I, I kind of think it's the challenge of, of 1 Peter, is to live, uh, to, to live this day the challenge of living as what? An alien in the world. It is so easy to get sucked in to living like the world. Just get sucked in. I meant to have my shop back here this morning. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to suck all this stuff up. You know what I mean? Because I'll guarantee you many of us get at the end of that suction and we get sucked into things. That's what happens. The flesh comes up and all of a sudden you're being sucked into thinking about it like the world thinks about it. Isn't that right? You're feeling those feelings and you're getting sucked in that those feelings are okay. No, they're not. They're coming from a broken background, a broken lifestyle, and we have to go with God's lifestyle. We have to make those decisions. So... I hope you pick up that challenge as I go through this morning. I think it's very important that you pick it up because uh, uh, I I think we have to make these decisions. And it's a very hard thing to live as an alien in this world. Verses 1 and 2, if you want to go with me there. The first part I'm going to talk about is, is the scripture elect. But elect aliens is something you need to think about because we're moving towards that. Let me just, let me say it like this. We as Christians are not just living in this world supposedly as aliens. We are living in this world as elect aliens. Now that's a big difference. This is about a group of people that would be today what we would know as 
the modern day Turkey. And about what's going on over there now was going on then and maybe worse. Persecution was terrible. Just like Christians are getting their heads cut off over in that area, just like Christians are being tortured, they're, they're being pushed out of their homes. And yes, many of those people are coming to America because they are, they are exiles. They're refugees. I know there's lots of emotional data around that area, but we better be thinking always that God does want us to care about refugees. He does. He's always been, he even told them, leave some grain around the edges for the exiles to come and pick. He always cares, God always cares about hurting people. Never forget that. If you, if you get over here and you forget about that, then God needs to stop us and bring us back. Hurting people are always in the very heart of God. Now, I just say that. I, I'm not trying to condemn anything. But we Americans can get so tied up in taking care of our own and being our own, we can forget about hurting people very quickly. They actually get in our way. Guy came by here yesterday, and he's telling me a long story, and I've heard lots of long stories. And I can almost read them as they go. But you know, after I get done hearing them and I've made up my mind, this guy is leading me down a path. After you get done, you have to look at you help this person though you have to go back to that you can't ever leave that and just say go your way no i must come back and say god how can i help i don't care if he's lying through his teeth and probably 90 percent of what he said was bull it was but it doesn't matter god loves that person and we are redemption people we are bringing people back together we're helping the hurting and i'm not very good at it matter of fact on my gift list Mercy's way down here. And some people told me that. No, you don't have any mercy. Well, you know, I tell you, I'm working at it. You know, I say, God, please give me mercy. You know, God will work on it for you. He will work on it. Exiles, refugees. And you look at that, and here's why you need the word elect. God is saying to those aliens through Peter, he's saying to them, I love you guys, and I'm allowing this to happen, and it's going to change your life for the better. He's saying to those people, you think it's terrible up there in Turkey right now, but he says, actually, I'm sending these things. Listen to that. Elect means I've elected you to go through this. You are special. You are important to me. And I'm allowing this to happen because it is literally going to build your
reaching out to me. He wants me to know him. Aren't you glad God reaches out to you? Did you know if you're here this morning, you're definitely probably part of the elect. Find out everything you can about how to be his elect. How to be in his life and be a part of him. Because the next scripture says, that's the next thing, you're elect by or in the sanctifying work of the Spirit. You know, if you're God's elect, God is trying to change you and make you into who you are supposed to be. I mean, God's got a job with some of you. You know that, don't you? I mean, he's been working on me for about how old? I mean, 70 years? I mean, he's been working on me. God so loves me, and I'm so excited about it, I want him to keep doing it. Because when I get to heaven, and that's what you're going to see about the inheritance in First Peter here, that inheritance, it says, is waiting for me in heaven. What does that say to you? It says, I don't have it yet. That means there's still work to go on. There's still a game to, to win. There's still a race to be run, won. Listen, many people run the race, but not everybody wins. So many people want a safety belt. Let me tell you, next Sunday I'm going to tell you what your safety belt is. I'll tell you next week what it is. It's an incredible thought when you look at this thing in 1 Peter. He was one sharp dude. He knew what had gone on because he had been a part of the whole journey. Now, sometimes we think about the sovereignty of God. Have you ever felt that God just has you there at that moment? You know, one time when I... When I way over here and said abraham i've chosen you now that wasn't necessarily fun don't even like and you hadn't even met you see what i'm saying but he has chosen you to be in that neighborhood for what reason i'm just putting a little guilt on you we all need to think about these things i call it questioning everything why do i live here why am i in brenham why am i I'm here because I want to be here. I'm also here because I know God wanted me here. Did you know it's important to know why you're here this morning? Is it here because God wants you here? Are you here because God placed you here? Maybe you're just wandering through and looking for First Baptist. I don't know. But see, you've got to find a place that you know where God has planted you or you will never be of value to the kingdom of God. Because when you know you're somewhere, why? You're much more consistent. You jump in then, see? It's because this is where you're supposed to be. Boy, when you know who you are in Christ, and you know God has placed you somewhere. That's why Peter said to these people over in 2.9, he said, you are a chosen race. Here they're going through hell on earth, and he says, you're a chosen race. Well, thank you, Peter. I'm glad I am. But no, Peter was saying, don't ever doubt how valuable you, valuable you are. I mean, it didn't look like anything was happening, but as people saw these people persecuted, and he saw them, and they saw them still loving and caring and reaching out, they...
sanctifying work of God, and you know that's happening to you. The third thing is you are the elect because you have been bought with a price. You've been sprinkled. In heaven he said start thinking of yourself as the primary constitution is the bible Scripture as it says there's going to be a day see because why we are aliens and we're talking a language of aliens because this is not our world matter of fact the dominant cravings within our heart are for the kingdom of God not for this earth that's the dominant cravings in our life we are literally like it or not we are aliens and here's why you have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. You're an alien. This is really not your home. We're passing through. Now, you say, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Listen, you will never live in this life without being sucked right into the vacuum cleaner. You will be pulled right in. The only way you can keep from being sucked into the vacuum cleaner is getting something big enough in your life that you can't go in that spout. And what is that big enough? Jesus Christ. That's the only way you're going to be able to keep from being sucked into the world's thinking. It will pull you right in. You know it. it has, you have had it happen, haven't you? At stoplights, you've had it happen. All across, the, you have it happen. You live in it day after day. Why? Because there are things that are coming at you. And if you do not fight against them through the power of Jesus Christ, they'll just suck you right in. Have you ever been inside of a vacuum cleaner? I was just thinking about that. I, I got up thinking about this. Isn't that something? I got to think about it. You know, a vacuum cleaner. You get sucked into that thing. It's dirty in there. But, you know, I get sucked into things all the time, and I, they're dirty. But I just overlook it. You just look around and say, well, not too bad a room in here. Can't see very well. It's kind of dusty in here. See, it's amazing how you can convince yourself it's okay to be in the vacuum cleaner. You never thought about that, have you? I hadn't either until this morning. 
And then I left my vacuum cleaner at home. <laughs> but you've seen those vacuum cleaners. They're about that big around. I mean, you can hook those things onto a, a sander, and it'll pull every cotton-picking bit of that dust right in there. And listen, we get into that dust, and all of a sudden, we're living in that vacuum cleaner. We're not living the way God called us to live. And God is so wanting us to quit being sucked into the lies and the deception. You are elect. You are important. You have been chosen. You have been chosen to be. And here's what's coming at you right now. I wanted to tell you that, and again, I'll come back to it. He says lust, this is all in 1 Peter 2, 11, 2, 21. He says lust wages a war against your soul. I don't know about you, but if I asked for a show of hands, most of you would have to raise your hand or you're a liar. You would. Because there's lust that's raging against you and trying to get you to make a choice. You have been called to suffer. Hallelujah. <laughs> Friends, if you don't realize you haven't been, you've called, been called to suffer, you will be wiped out most days of your life. What does he say? His suffer, those that have suffered in the flesh... See, that means if you're willing to suffer in the flesh, you're through with sin. Suffering in the flesh is not letting your flesh control your life. You suffer in the flesh, you say, no, down dog, I'm going this way. And that's the only way you get there. There's no psychological help that'll help you get through that. They revile your good behavior. And you mess up everybody else because you always show up on time to work. And if you quit showing up on time and, and always doing the extra work, listen, if you just take it easy, then all of us can, look, you know, we can all slow down. But you work so cotton big and hard, you make us look bad. That's what you should be doing. And you should be loving those guys and not worrying about doing their job sometimes. Because why? We've died with Christ. We're serving in His kingdom. We're part of the army of reconciliation. And if we're not, we're in the wrong army, right? It says, they malign you for not running with them. Peter's talking to all these things. He's talking to people that are hurting. And, and he's saying, you're the elect, but look what you're going to get to go through. He says, you're reviled for the name of Christ. Now, not many of us would say, hey, that, I, I want to pick that one. Choose me. Now, let me just tell you the truth. We're beginning as Christians to feel more and more like refugees. How about you? We're becoming more and more the minority. See, we're, we're getting less and less important in America. Christians are not becoming the favorite people of the world. And what's happening over there, we think can't happen here. It is so close, we don't even realize it. Christians are literally going to have to make a decision. Do you want to serve Christ or do you want to be American? And you will have to make that decision. Or you're my age and you'll die before it happens, maybe. Not either one real good choices. Things, events, and situations destroy many times in our lives opportunity to build relationships because we let the flesh come up. See, living in a foreign land, and we are, as Christians, we are living like aliens. When you're living in a foreign land, it can cause incredible stress. It can. Now, if it was totally, you know, like everybody in America is a Christian, it'd be very easy. But somehow, it's just not quite that way. But living in a foreign land can cause in incredible stress. And things and situations will happen that keep destroying our relationships with one another and our relationships with the world. Just in what you saw happen this week, if you get on your Facebook and you start preaching your spiritual proudness or something, you cause division. You should be weeping on your Facebook saying, I'm praying for the people of America. I don't care what color they are. I like one statement that said, stupidity comes in all colors. You know, it, it is a stupid thing when we allow the world to suck us in to start hating any nationality on this earth. It is a sad thing. We're all making huge mistakes. But listen, somehow we've got to be the people that stand up and say, we love people. 
and we're going to pray for you. We're going to care about you. We're, we're, we're sorry what's happened in, in your life. And it's not because of your color. Because definitely there's injustice that is done in our land. And it is not a good thing. And the only way that will ever be totally stopped is when Jesus comes back. But we as a church can be in the middle of all of it with love, with concern. Did you know aliens? Now, this is probably a, a closing scary thing. Oh, I missed all of those. Okay. An alien. Isn't that good to pass all those up? You didn't know it. Did you know aliens can fall? You know what that means? Well, read that scripture. He says, Paul is talking there to Timothy. And he says, Timothy, I'm sorry to tell you, but Demas, having loved this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonia. What did Demas do? Well, you say, well, that may he just had a bad day. You know, he just decided to go home for a while. No, Paul didn't tell you that. That isn't what Paul said. I, I, I don't, I, I, well, I'm going to pass that thought. But the thought is, Demas says to Timothy, Listen, a very sad day in my life because somebody that was with me that I love dearly, he has chosen to desert the kingdom of God. When an alien falls in love with the world, it's a sad day. When an alien begins to love the world more than they love Christ, it's a sad day. It is a great tragedy to renounce our citizenship in heaven and live for this present world. And it says there, the world is passing away and its desires, but the one who does the will of God abides forever. There's two statements there. He is saying when somebody decides to love the world, they are actually denouncing their citizenship in heaven, and they're saying, I want to be a part of this world. And he says, you need to remember this scripture, John is saying, because the one who does the will of, the, of God is who keeps on abiding forever. The world is passing away. So if this is where your citizenship is, you need to think about it. Now, there is another scripture that we pass. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. So we're not really the judges of who's in and who's out. But we are the protector of our own souls. God, teach me, show me, help me. Matter of fact, Paul is saying to these people, he's saying, by the sanctifying work of God, you're going to know if you are the elect of God. He says, I'm going to show you these things. I'm going to help you know who you are. Let's finish with that one. The world is passing away, and its desires, the one who does the will of God, abides forever. How are you doing? This morning, looking at your life, thinking about yourself, I'm not trying to condemn or put anybody down, but are you in the vacuum cleaner, or are you really, you know, you're moving on? Are you being sucked in by a lot of things this morning? In your life, are you being sucked in by feelings, emotions, attitudes, worldly ambition, Maybe you got a lot more love of money mixed in with your love of God than you think. Maybe you got a lot more hatred and bitterness inside of you. You've been sucked in that it's okay. I can keep hating that person. I can feel that way. It's okay. I know I'm a Christian, but I just don't like that person, and I just kind of hope something, you know, maybe fall off a cliff or something, you know. Uh, maybe a car wreck, but don't kill him. Just wound him, you know. I mean, I, what is going on in your heart? Where are you at? You could be in the vacuum cleaner this morning and not even know it. You know what I mean? Got so much dust and everything on you, you think that's normal. Everybody else in there has got dust on them. They all look the same. Their all attitude is that way. They're bitter, mean, ornery, saying things, cussing, just, just not happy people. But we have hope, see? Aren't we? Now, if that hope is not living in you right now, if it's not alive, that's why we call this hope alive. If it's not alive in you, then see, you're looking at things from the wrong view. Because you should be looking at everything happening in your life 
Listen, when I took the bandage on the morning after I had that surgery, I looked at my life and I despaired of living. You, you, you think I'm kidding? I did. I'm not kidding. My face was everything to me. I didn't know it was everything to me. But when I looked at that thing, I will never look the same, God. Good cow. God, how, why do I have to look this way the rest of the world? Well, he encouraged me. He said, well, some people can't help it. Now, I, I didn't mean that that way at all. You're, some of you catching up, but I mean, with a face like mine, you, you really notice when it, there's a blemish on it. Listen, you can get so tied into your emotional feelings and who you are and what you're doing that you don't even realize you're living more as a, a, a not an, as an alien, but as a member of the United States of America. You're a member of Earth. And you've joined this citizenship and you've given up a citizenship. I'm asking you this morning to reconsider a recommitment to your citizenship of heaven and your commander-in-chief Jesus Christ and the Constitution is the Bible and I'm asking you in the midst of all that's going on in the world to recommit to that could you do that would you stand with me Lord we are your people and Lord we want to be your people we want to be we want to be cleansed we want your Holy Spirit to come and cleanse our hearts show us where we're tied to the world and the things of the world Lord, don't let the world take us and make us into a citizen of earth. Don't let us get sucked in to these concepts of the world. Don't let us get sucked in to just a bunch of Facebook ideas. Lord, help us to be sucked in to the Word of God. Help us to come and commit ourselves to our commander-in-chief again today. Help us to come to a place that we say, Lord, we will live by the Bible. Show us, teach us, help us to know what it says so we can do it, Lord. Give us the strength, Lord. Because I know, Lord, you have called us. We are your elect. What an incredible opportunity we have. We're not just people living on the earth. We have been chosen by God. You love us that much, Lord. Now, come and touch our hearts. Some of you may need to have encouragement. Some of you may need to make a decision to make your citizenship in heaven. This morning, you need to come down maybe and just confirm you want to be a citizen of heaven. And we have prayer teams that, that already trained, and Lynette has got them all set up, and they're going to be coming down right now. And, and you can just start right now saying, Lord, do I need to go down there and get some of this dust off of me? Do I need to go down there? I, I've been hanging around that, that vacuum cleaner too long. I need to, I need to go down there and, and have some help. And if you do, these prayer teams are going to be available for you. And maybe you, you just know, you know your citizenship is not in heaven right now. You're a citizen of this earth. And you want to make your citizenship in heaven. You can do that today. You can just come down here with these prayer teams, any of us, and they will pray for you and ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you with Jesus. Lord, let that happen today. Let that happen today. And as, they, as you just kind of hear this music, that's just a sign that you're free to start seeking him. Just to come down right now. Just think about it. Don't let Satan talk you out of anything. Go for it. Go for what God's telling you to do. Go for what God's telling you to do. Is he talking to you? Are you saved? Where's your citizen? Just think about it. God loves you. And he's the one's chosen that you receive him, believe in him today. He's the one that wants to take that big duster out and get all of that junk off of you. It's a beautiful spirit, isn't it? Don't you just feel a peace? 
just a piece. Would you turn that just a hair louder? Sorry it was hot in here. God bless you as you go. God bless you. Have a great day. Enjoy the presence of God. Enjoy the presence of God.